Once again, welcome to Thompson Road Baptist Church Sunset Online Service. Today is the 13th of September, 2020. Please prepare your hearts for the worship. Let the message of Christ dwell among you, richly as you teach and abolish one another, with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs, from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 Let's join our heart in praise and worship. No. 
Good evening. This evening I'm preaching from Genesis chapter 40 verse 1 to chapter 41 verse 57. And the title of my message is Prison to Palace. And I'd like to start out with this question is that does your environment control your thinking or does your thinking control your environment? Joseph's life shows us that we do not need to let our environment control our thinking. Thus, even though when he was sold by his brothers to the Ishmaelites, it did not set him back in any ways. But he went on to become the Prime Minister of Egypt. The Ishmaelites were the descendants of Ishmael, who was born to Hagar with Abraham. And his brother was Isaac, or half-brother was Isaac. And Isaac was the father of Jacob. And Joseph was Jacob's son. So in other words, he's the grandson of Isaac and the great-grandson of Abraham. And he was sold to Potiphar after he was was sold to the Ishmaelite by his brother. And Potiphar put him in charge of his house. And Potiphar's wife was attracted to Joseph and tried to seduce him. But Joseph did not respond to her, her advances. And this led him to be framed for attempted rape by her and, be, and was put in prison by Potiphar, her husband. So Joseph spent the next 10 years in prison after that, before he was vindicated to serve in Pharaoh's court at the age of 30. You know, when Joseph was sold, he was 17 years old. So he served Potiphar for three, that's mixed 10. And then he served another 10 years in prison at the age of 30. And chapter four, chapters 40 and 41, uh, records for us the account of his imprisonment that led to the opening up for him to serve Pharaoh in his palace. And so chapter 14 verses 1 to 23, we see how Joseph was being prepared in prison for the appointment in the palace. And throughout the story of Joseph, in particular in these two chapters, we see that what Joseph meant when he says in Genesis 50 to 20 to his brothers later in this way. He says, you meant evil against me, but God used it for good. It also reminds us of what Paul says in Romans 8, 28, when he says, we know that in all things God works for good for those who love him, who have been called. And as we look at Chapter 40, verses 1 to 8, uh, Joseph was, because of his interpretation of dreams that gave him the opportunity to go to Pharaoh's court to interpret for him Pharaoh's himself dream. See, when Joseph was in prison, Pharaoh also put his chief cupbearer and chief baker in prison for whatever reasons we are not told. In verses 1 to 8, we read of that account. And then in, according to Genesis 39 verse 1, the captain of the guard was Potiphar himself. And so Potiphar put these two new prisoners under Joseph's care. So we can see here that Joseph when he was serving in Potiphar's house, he was the second in command. And now in Potiphar's prison, he was also made the second in command. You know, some people are good at being the second in command instead of being the first. And if, if you make such a person to be first in command, he may not be as effective as he is in his second in command's position. And if you are of such a kind of person, you need to know yourself so that you do not uh, you know, uh, misuse your gift when you are not at your best fit. 
And also those who serve with us, especially our superior, uh, must also know us enough to know that we, how we best fit an organization so that we can benefit everybody in that company or in that organization. And so we need to know ourselves and people who are above us in particular needs to know us as well. And then the story goes on as the chief cup bearer and the chief baker, they had a dream one night. And the next morning, Joseph saw them and he saw that troubled look that they have and he asked them. And one of them says, we both had dreams, but there's nobody to tell us what it means. And so Joseph replied, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me your dreams. And so Joseph said interpretations belong to God and yet he interpreted their dreams. Why? Because Joseph knows something about dreams as he had at least two of them himself according to Genesis 37. And he learned from his experience that God is the one who gives the meaning because when he told his brother and his, his brothers and his father about his dreams, they understood the meaning without him explaining to them. And so he assumed that God revealed that meaning to them. And it is also clear from all the dreams, whether his personal or even this chief cup bearer and the chief baker, all these dreams are personal to the dreamer himself. And it's the dream that Joseph got that got him into trouble. And it's also his ability to, to interpret dreams for Pharaoh that got him out of his troubles. But chapter 40 also tells us something very sad in that sense because he was forgotten by his beneficiary, particularly the chief cupbearer. And so Genesis 40, 9, uh, for chapter 40, verse 9 to 23, we find this story unfold itself here more. In verses 9 to 11, the cup bearer told Joseph his dream. He says, I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. And so Joseph interpreted the dream for him in verses 12 to 13. He says the three branches are the three days. And within three days, Pharaoh is going to lift you up, lift up your head and restore you to your position. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cup bearer. But he added, but when all goes well with you, remember me, show me kindness, mention me to Pharaoh, get me out of this prison. I was forc forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon in verses 14 to 15. And when the, chief cup, uh, when the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph in verse 16 to 17, I too had a dream. On my head were three baskets of bread. In the top baskets were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. And then Joseph interpreted for him in verses 18 to 19. He says the three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale the, your body with, on a pole. And the birds will eat away your flesh. And the three days came true. Because three days later, at Pharaoh's birthday party, he fulfilled the interpretation Joseph gave to them. In the presence of his official, Pharaoh restored the chief cupbearer 
but had the chief baker impaled, as Joseph said. Yet, chief cupbearer forgot about Joseph after his reinstatement to office. You know, it's easy for people to forget those who helped them when their lives were bad, and now they become better. Israel is a very good example of this. She forgot God, the God who delivered them from their bondage in Egypt. And the minute they enter into the wilderness, they make a golden calf. And then when they enter the promised land, when life gets better, they worship other gods. I hope we are not like Israel and we are not like the cup bearer. After God has blessed us, we forget about him. And then we put the story moves on to chapter 41, verses 1 to 57, where we see Joseph being promoted to the palace to serve Pharaoh. But this is after two years of waiting in the prison. Joseph went to the palace two years only after the cup bearer remembered him. And it is only when no one else could interpret Pharaoh's dreams, then the cup bearer remembered Joseph. And in verses 1 to 4, is the first part of Pharaoh's dream. Verses 5 to 7 is the second part of Pharaoh's dream. Or his twofold dreams. And when he had that dream, he was troubled when he woke up and he summoned his magician, his wise man, to interpret the dream for him, but they could not. It was at this moment that the chief cupbearer remembered Joseph and he told Pharaoh about him in verses 9 to 13. <clears throat> and so Pharaoh had Joseph brought before him and told him that no one else could interpret his dream, but he heard about Joseph. And Joseph's reply was, I cannot do it, but God will give you, Pharaoh, the answer. In saying so, Joseph was not denying or refusing to interpret Pharaoh's dream as Pharaoh went on to tell Joseph his dream in verses 17 to 24. You know, very few people will give God the credit, but many will take the credit for themselves. And sometimes there are those who even take credit for things they do not do, or they did not do. So Pharaoh took, went on and told Joseph the dream, and this is what his, uh, the dream is all about. He says, In my dream I was standing on the bank of the Nile, when out of the river there came up seven cows, seven cows, okay, seven cows, fat and slick. Uh, they grazed among the reeds. All, all the seven other, and, uh, and sorry, after that, seven other cows came up. But this time they are scrawny, ugly, and lean. And he says, I have never seen such cows in all the land of Egypt. The lean, ugly cows ate up the seven fat ca uh, cows that came up first. But even after they eat them, they did not grow fatter they continue to look ugly and lean as before. And then he says, I woke up. And then in, when I went back to sleep and had the, the, uh, another dream, that is, I saw seven heads of grain, full and good, growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads sprouted, but these heads are all withered and thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallow up the seven good heads. I told these dreams to my magicians, but none of them could explain it to me. So Joseph replied in verses 25 to 32, he says, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and they are the same. God has revealed, he says, to Pharaoh what he's about to do in the land of Egypt. There are going to be seven good cows or the seven good cows are seven years and the seven good heads of grains are seven years. It is one and the same dreams. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterwards are the seven years. So are the seven 
worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. Those are the seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. There will be seven years of great abundance in the land of Egypt. And there will be seven years of famine that will follow. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. And the abundance in the land will not be remembered because the family that follows will be so severe. And the reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in these two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. And Joseph also suggested to Pharaoh in verses 33 to 40 that Pharaoh needs to look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Is Joseph promoting himself? We do not know. But let Pharaoh appoint commissioner over the land to take a fifth of the food of these good years that are coming and store them in, under his authority and to be kept in different cities for food. This food shall be held in the reserve for the country to be used in the, during the seven years of famine that will come on, upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. And Pharaoh liked the idea very much. In verse 38, he asked, Where can I find such a man, one in whom is the Spirit of God dwelling in? And Pharaoh was actually referring to Joseph because he gave him the position in verses 39 to 40. And now Joseph, the prisoner of Potiphar, the captain of the guard, is now even of a higher rank than him. All this because of the sovereign will of God and his power to make Joseph the prince or the prime minister of Egypt. He brought Joseph out from prison to the palace for a very important reason. And we miss this point as we read this story. Most people miss this point because God preserved him and God made him the prime minister of Egypt so that he could save his own family who will become the nation of Israel. It is his gift of interpretation to Joseph that brought him to the palace because Joseph honored God. He did not take credit for himself and God honored him and God used him for this great task. See, when God gives us success, do we honor him or do we take the credit for ourselves? Do we see that God's honoring of us has a bigger purpose than just to make us somebody greater? So let us learn to discern God's way and God's will in our lives. And let us be like Joseph who did not forget God in his times of difficulties. He did not forget the God who blessed him. Instead, let us not be like the chief cup bearer who forgot Joseph for a two full years before he remembered him. And so after that, we see Joseph being promoted as well as given a wife in marriage. Chapter 41 verses 41 to verses 57. Promotion to marriage. So Pharaoh appointed Joseph to be that man and his second in command in Egypt. And he gave Joseph a signet ring, fine linen clothes and a gold change. And all these things are symbols of honor given to a high official. 
And he also made Joseph ride in a chariot to declare to the whole of Egypt that Joseph was now the second in command to him in verses 41 to 44. And the foreigner, the prisoner, is now the prime minister of Egypt. And Pharaoh gave Joseph a new name, Zephina Panea, one who reveals mystery. That's what it means. And he also gave Joseph a, a, a wife, Asina, daughter of Potiphera, priest of Ong, to be his wife. For Pharaoh, it was a perfect match because a priest's daughter and somebody who is who has the spirit of God in him. Okay, so and and it and it is not said, but maybe Pharaoh also knew what happened to him in Potiphar's house that landed him in prison, and so Pharaoh was preventing any kind of problems that may happen as well, that he gave him this woman as his wife. And so at that time, Joseph was 30 years old when he began serving Pharaoh. And just before the famine, his wife gave birth to two sons for him in verses 46 to 49. He named the firstborn Manasseh. God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. The second he named as Ephraim, God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. You see, here again, Joseph gave glory and honor to God. In his answer to the chief cup bearer and the chief baker and to uh, Potip, uh, and Pharaoh, he gave God the glory. And here, even his son, he gave God the glory. He never forget God at all. In fact, he said, God, help him to forget all his troubles since he got sold by his brother until now. And he forgot about what his brothers did to him. And the second son's name, he says, he says that God not only do that, did that for me, but God also made me fruitful in this land of suffering. So it, even in the times of his suffering in the foreign land, God has blessed him abundantly. He was grateful to God. And then famine came. And the people went to cry to Pharaoh for help. And Pharaoh sent them to Joseph. And Joseph opened up the storehouses sold the grains to them, and he saved the Egyptians as a result from their starvation and their hunger. And later, his own family as well. And so truly, Joseph lived up to, his, to the meaning of his name in, because in Hebrew, the name means Savior. And God gave him at least two of two gifts. The gift we see in his interpretation of dreams, and then the second is the, the gift to manage the resources, the responsibility that he was given. And Joseph used those gifts to serve others, to help others. And as Christians, we too must use our gifts and our resources to help others and to serve them. Unlike today, many people will use their gifts and their resources to serve themselves, to serve their own pleasures and enjoyment. But Joseph's story teaches us differently. In fact, his story taught us those who fear and trust God will be honored by him. It also teaches us that in this world, there will be troubles, just as Jesus says. But we must focus on God. Focus on what he is doing instead of our circumstances that are trying to do something to us. You know, when you 
observe a rapid. I don't know whether you have seen a rapid before or a, 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 a river with rushing water. Okay. And in California, I, I've seen a lot of such river when I go hiking. And when we look at those kind of uh, rushing waters down the stream, it often catches our attention because uh, the foam and all the, the, the danger of it uh, draws us to focus on it. And as you look at them, and sometimes those running waters, rushing waters, can heighten our fear as well. Uh, as we think, oh, if I fall into it, what will happen to me? You know, that kind of thing. But when you, when you look past the turbulence of the, those rushing waters, and you notice that around those turbulent waters, they're also, it is also surrounded by waters that will come, just smooth sailing through without all the foam and all those uh, rush of the water that you see in the rapids. Okay. And, and if you focus on those calm waters, it restores to you some sense of peace and safety. And Joseph, he did not focus on the turbulence because he had many turbulences in his life but he did not take his eyes away from God. He focused on where his calmness and peace can come from. You know, we may, be, we may feel right now that we are in prison here on earth because of all the turbulences we face in this world. But we can be certain that God, the God who brought Joseph from prison to palace, can also bring us out of those prisons that, and that imprisons us in our fears and anxieties. And, and if we focus on those things that are turbulence, then it will rob us of our fear and our hope. Especially right now, in the time of a pandemic, the shrinking in economy, the loss of jobs, and also the rumors of war. All this can make us fearful and anxious and rob us of our peace and hope. And so may, may we put our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ himself who gives us peace and assurance that he will get us through even though the surrounding may look turbulent. And so may we trust in him and hope in him always. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and may your word teach us to fix our eyes on Jesus and not on our circumstances and we can bring glory and witness for you in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
家是我的荣耀，一生都跟随快跑。我要顺服，因为我爱你。无论何处，到哪里都忠心。世界万物都丢弃，看作粪。要得着耶稣基督，我要顺服，因为我爱你。无论何处，到哪里都忠心，一生活出基督福音的托付，献给耶稣我所有的全部，一生活出。Father, we want to thank you for the message today. Help us to remember all the wonderful things that you have done for us. Teach us not to forget all of them, whether in good time or in bad. Teach us to continue to rejoice in you, whether in good time or bad. To glorify your name, to live a life worthy to be a Christian. Thank you, Lord. Lead us, guide us. We also want to offer a portion of what we have received from you back into your ministry. We ask that God, you bless it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The following are some announcement. Last week offering collection is five thousand nine hundred and thirty-four dollars. For those who are interested in CEC's two o two o, we are conducting the camp between first and the fourth of December. That is between Tuesday and Friday. But it shall be conducted online, and it is only going to be a half-day session. For the pre-primary, they will be attending the morning session, and the primary will be attending the afternoon session. If you want to know more about the camp program, you can download the program from. TRBCCEC dot WordPress dot com. For those who are interested to offer help, you can download the volunteers form from this QR code. The registration date is between twenty third of August and six of September. Volunteers are required to attend a training on the fourth 
14th of November, which is a Saturday. For those who like to register for your children attending this CEC camp, you can download the registration form from this QR code. The camp fee is $50. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you from now until evermore. Amen. Praise